it is time to ask you to leave the church and go into the courtyard. So for the blessing of the light, and as you go into the courtyard out the back door, you'll be given a candle, an unlit candle to hold, and we'll be lighting those candles in just a few moments. If you are not unable to process in the church with us and just remain where you are, but I must tell you, all the lights are going to be take, put out of the church in about a minute, all the lights. So we'll need you to uh, uh, leave the church before we do that so we don't have you trip and fall. So just move, your, move it to the uh, courtyard for the service of the light. Testing, testing, testing. Congratulations. Is the game over? Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Hello. Homily yesterday, your homily was absolutely astounding. Thank you. I appreciate your comment. Please keep coming out. All right. Does everybody have a candle? Okay. So we're going to be blessing the new light, blessing the new Paschal candle, and lighting the candle. Then after we've done that, our electing catechumens will light their candles and the altar servers from the Paschal candle. And they'll turn around to the people right in front of them, light the candle. Then you turn around to the people behind you, and we'll get this cascading effect going all the way to the back of this light. And then when everyone's candle is lit, then I will say, Jesus Christ is risen and the Lord is risen, rather, and you will say, he, is, he has indeed risen. All right, let's practice that. The Lord is risen. He has indeed risen. Boy, that's great. Okay. <laughs> Have you done this before? I guess I don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. O oh God, 
and through your Son, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain the festivities of unending splendor through Christ. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and praise through every age and forever. Amen. Amen. And now I will insert five pieces of incense representing the five wounds of Christ. By his holy, and glorious wounds may Christ our Lord guard us and protect us May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. The Lord is risen. He is indeed risen. Light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Now, if you'll follow through the entrance of the courtyard, and we'll process into the church. be to
Lord, being your heart and on your lips, you may really proclaim and exalt it in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And also with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, 
truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to, ma to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please extinguish your, your candles and be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss. 
while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seeds in it. And so it happened. lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminarios in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. So God made two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. team with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. And God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile. Multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Let 
us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the divine image, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds in the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. And God saw that it was good. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, May those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God put Abraham to the test. Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac, and two of his servants as well and with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham caught sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. He then took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulder while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father? Yes, son. Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. 
when they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Lord. Do not lay your hand on the boy. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven. I swear by myself that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through onto dry land. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. A column of cloud came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. The cloud now became dark. Then Moses stretched out his hand, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night and turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the area, the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. And the Egyptians followed in pursuit all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went right after them into the midst of the sea. I will bless the Lord at all times, at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times, at all times. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, 
upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. Word of the Lord. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for once you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, Come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you, For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to him who sows and bread to him who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the end for which I sent it.
word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thus the word of the Lord came to me. Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that he might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too, must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Open your heart down your lips. You may really proclaim this holy gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory 
to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. was laid in the tomb beneath Calvary. It was a man, but it wasn't just any man. It was love incarnate. As we read in the first letter of John, God is love. It was God who laid in that tomb, the God-man. Jesus Christ. In the tomb lay the Prince of Peace. It was he who witnessed there is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. In the tomb lay the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Buried in the tomb was the Good Shepherd. Who remained outside the tomb, continuing their lives? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, those who orchestrated the death of Jesus, Pontius Pilate and the Romans, those who nailed Jesus to the cross and pierced his side with a lance. Outside the tomb was his betrayer, Outside the tomb was his friend who denied him. Huddled in the upper room were his disciples who abandoned Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, terrified that they would be the next ones to be crucified. But he who was the fullness of love, joy, peace, and patience the fullness of kindness and generosity, faithfulness and gentleness. He was the one who lay buried in the tomb. All the while, those who were cruel, hateful, sinful, and fearful 
remained outside the tomb. There's something incongruent about this. It doesn't make any sense at all. But then on the third day, early in the morning, the world would be set right. Jesus would leave the tomb. And St. Paul writes in his first letter to the Corinthians, now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. What happened to Jesus will happen to us. We will rise from the dead. However, we do not have to wait until physical, clinical death claims us for the end of the world to come and then to rise from our graves. We don't have to wait for that because in this life we can experience many resurrections. Many resurrections. Father Ron Rollheiser writes, physical death for most of us comes last. First, there is a long series of other deaths, of crucifixions, of diminishments and losses. In this, we follow the pattern of what happened to Christ. The complete self-revelation of God, the love and goodness of God, was crucified and buried in that tomb. And this is our story. Because we will carry crosses. We will be crucified in our lives many times with hurts and pains, betrayals. This is our story. How often does the image of Christ in us get crucified and buried within us? Then what is perfect, imperfect rather, what is sinful and selfish, remains alive for everyone to see. But the image of Christ that we are to be, we bury. We bury deep within. Where we are most precious, most beautiful, where the true image of God exists, often gets buried deep within us. I go through life, living life my way, and I'm proud of that. Ungrateful, unfaithful to God, hurting others, rationalizing my behavior, lying to myself and others that I'm doing just fine in my relationship with God. And yet, I have buried all that is good about me deep down in a tomb. All the while, Christ in us is living in that tomb, buried deep down in the darkness that we are afraid to explore. Only after Mary Magdalene announced that Jesus had risen from the tomb did Peter and John run to that tomb. We already know that Jesus is risen. We know that. Yet, how often do we remain behind locked doors, afraid to run out and be with Jesus? On this night, we are being challenged. Daily, we have to roll back the stone and leave an empty tomb. Daily, we must strive to let Christ rise in our hearts and in our lives, and let the truth of Jesus radiate in our lives, his love and joy and peace and patience, his kindness and generosity, faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Let these manifest the gifts of the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ within us. Every day we have a decision to make as disciples of Jesus, whether we will roll away that stone or keep the stone in front of the tomb. Whether Jesus within us will be seen by the world or hidden in a tomb of fear, discouragement, and disappointment. By our witness in our families, in the workplace, among neighbors and friends and even strangers, 
Do we live a resurrected life? Or is Jesus still buried in that tomb? Now, this may be a strange statement for you to hear. But as Christians, we do not believe in an afterlife. We don't. We don't believe that we die and go to some other place. Remember what Jesus taught. The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed. No one will announce, look, here it is, or look, there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. It's not out there or up there. The kingdom of God is already present, but it is just not complete yet. Father Timothy Radcliffe, former head of the, of the Dominicans around the world, wrote, We believe in eternal life, which happens as we are ignited by the love of others. When we physically die, our present living for God comes to fruition. So we are living in the kingdom of God now through our love. God is love but it will come to its fullness and will receive all the fruits of a life well lived when physical death occurs. It is just like a child in its mother's womb. Now we believe that life begins at conception. So the child for several months is wrapped in the mother's love in her womb and the child is alive. At birth, love then reaches to a new depth as the baby emerges from the womb. The Spanish expression for birth is dar a luz, to give to the light. Isn't that a beautiful expression? Dar a luz, to give to the light. Now the mother and child at birth see face to face. The baby is no longer surrounded by darkness. The baby is taken from the darkness and given to the light. With each daily resurrection we experience, when Jesus rises from the darkness within us, for all to see his glory shining through, Jesus is given to the light. And if we choose unity with the light, the light of Christ, which is symbolized by the Paschal candle, then we are given to the light. If we are united with Jesus, then we are given to the light. Tonight, as we began our vigil, it was begun in darkness. And then the light of the Paschal candle was shared in the courtyard, and that light began to cascade throughout the entire courtyard. We have been given to the light. <laughs> that is our call. That is our vocation, to be given to the light. And we must roll that stone back every single day so that Christ can be risen again in our hearts, so the good in us that lies hidden can be revealed, and that which is weak and sinful in us lies hidden away. We died to ourself so that Jesus the light can live in us. Pope Francis teaches, the resurrection of Christ is the mystery of the discarded stone which becomes the foundation of our existence. That stone, Jesus, the source of life, is often discarded in this throwaway culture. Too often, it's too easy to put Christ away and bury him in the darkness. Of course, unless we need something, and then we bring him out of the darkness. But the Holy Father compares us to pebbles that are attached to the stone that is rolled away from the front of the tomb. We acquire meaning when we stand outside the empty tomb 
as an empty tomb. Jesus is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Jesus is risen in us. Throughout our life, there must be regular resurrections. Christ, who is love, must rise in us daily. Love will triumph over apathy and hatred. Togetherness will triumph over loneliness. Peace over chaos and forgiveness over bitterness. As we celebrate tonight the resurrection of Jesus, let us celebrate Jesus rising from the tomb, not only 2,000 years ago, but tonight. Rising from the tomb where we have kept him hidden. Let your life become an empty tomb where all that is good, holy, and loving is visible for everyone to see. The world awaits your resurrection dance where you are given to the light, bringing life and love and hope to everyone you meet. Would those who are to be baptized please come forward now with your godparents, Jennifer Powell, Elizabeth Baker, and her child, Cristiano Adrian Diaz. Members of the community of Sacred Heart, dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our sisters and brother, so they, as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. Please stand for the litany of saints. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, Pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, Pray for us, Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us, Saint Lawrence. Pray for us, Saint Perpetuo and Saint Felicity. Pray for us, Saint Agnes. Pray for us, Saint Gregory. Pray for us, Saint Augustine. Pray for us, Saint Athanasius. Pray for us, Saint Basil. Pray for us, Saint Martin. 
pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine, pray for us. Saint Teresa, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, hear, to hear our prayer. Bring these chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love to send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wonderful effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and the beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized, O God, whose Son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side, along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. Dear Godparents of those who wish to be baptized, you have come here to present these elect for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, they are to receive the gift of new life from God, who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring them up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God gives to them will continue to grow always stronger in their hearts and, keep, and kept safe from the poison of sin. So if your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, I ask you, sponsor, godparents, to renew now the vows of your baptism, reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which these elect are about to be baptized. And so I ask you, sponsors, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord, keep us in his grace for eternal life. Those of you who wish to die and rise with Christ through the waters of baptism, I now invite you to come forward. Jennifer, you first. Come ahead here. Jump down. Hold it down. <laughs> Jennifer. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You have put on Christ, in him you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You have put on Christ, in him you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. And this is Cristiano, who will be baptized in his mother's arms. Cristiano. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have put on Christ, in him you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia.
God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you, Cristiano, from all sin and given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Will those candidates who have already been baptized and now wish to be received into full communion with the church, please come forward with your sponsors, Kylie Keevan and Catherine Mazze. My dear candidates, by your own free will, you have been at, you've been asked to be received into full communion in the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought and discernment under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now ask you in the presence of your sponsors and this community to witness to the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. So I ask you, do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes teaches and proclaims to be revealed by God. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His love has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. And we welcome you and congratulate you. Jennifer and Elizabeth, you have become new creations and have clothed yourselves in Christ. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. See in the white garment that you are wearing the outward sign of your Christian dignity. Now, sponsors, I invite you to now come forward and receive and light your candles, a baptismal candle from the Paschal candle, and share that light with our new brothers and sisters in the light of Christ. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. And when the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in his heavenly kingdom. Would those who are to receive their final sacrament of initiation please come forward with your sponsors, Joseph Kozar and Francesca Beeler. My dear brothers and sisters, you are members of Christ and his priestly people. Now all of you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord to his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to all the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. Dear friends, let us pray to God, the all-powerful Father, that he will pour out the Holy Spirit upon these, our baptized brothers and sisters, to strengthen them with his abundant gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, his Son.
all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon these, our brothers and sisters, to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Jennifer, be filled with the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father. Peace be with you. Elizabeth, be filled with the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father. Peace be with you. Kylie, be filled with the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father. Peace be with you. Catherine, be filled with the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father. Peace be with you. Joseph, be sealed with the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Francesca, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father. Peace be with you. Now let us all stand and share with one another the gift of peace that we have all received through our baptism. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan at his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you all, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do.
God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now offer to the Lord our prayers of petition. For the church and for our newest members, that we might be filled with a vigorous faith renewed hope, and profound charity. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For the brokenhearted in our world, that they might experience the sure hope and compelling joy of the risen Lord. For family and parishioners separated from our Easter celebration by distance or duty, but united with us in resurrection, hope, and joy. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering or sick, may the peace of the risen Christ be theirs. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have followed Jesus in his death, may they be united with him in his resurrection, especially Diane Waking. And for the silent needs of our hearts. May we turn to the Lord in confidence, knowing he is risen indeed and among us. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we rejoice in the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus. And through him we lift you these prayers in the hope that you will answer them for all your people, you who are God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Except, O oh Lord, we ask you the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. It is right. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, on the night above all, to loud you let more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and John, his assistant Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended 
by your protecting help. Therefore, we pray, Lord, graciously accept its oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these gifts with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty Father, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the peace of Christ. I call to mind our departed loved ones. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship 
with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and for Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Christ. The body of 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 Christ.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf We also thank Father Mike. Isn't he a beautiful singer? Oh. <laughs> I think he meant that as an April Fool's joke. <laughs> no, okay. okay. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Hallelujah. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. May he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his holy begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast. Come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia.
Happy Easter. God bless you. Happy Easter. <laughs> I don't want to miss all these uh, lovely hugs. <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. God bless you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. God bless you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Peggy. God bless you. Happy Easter. Thank you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Good to see you. Happy Easter. Thank you. Come on, Avenue. Happy Easter. How are you? God bless you. Take care. Happy Easter. Very happy. Don't be back before. Hello. Oh, I just stepped on you. Sorry. Hello. Happy Easter. Oh. 